What's up, Bug Doug with Dee in the garage. Today we're talking spares for the Jeep 4 liter. Could be the difference between camping on the side of the road or making it home. Let's get into it. What in the world am I talking about? Well, if you've never seen one of my videos, I am probably the biggest advocate on the planet for on one of your days off, getting on the old internet there, finding out where the closest you pull junkyard is to you, heading out there, and go ahead and pull some spares. I'm talking all the sensors and fuses and relays and other electronical bits that go bad in your Jeep and want to leave you on the side of the road. Specifically today, we're going to talk about the 4 liter. Alrighty friends, first up in a very common culprit are the throttle body sensors. Right here, we're at this 1998 ZJ. To illustrate that, to get to your throttle body sensors, you're going to pop your air box off. And while your throttle body is connected, go ahead and disconnect the actual connector. It's going to be much easier than when it's floating around. Then it's going to be four 10 millimeter bolts. Once the fasteners are out, you can pick her up and that will allow you to remove your throttle downshift and cruise control linkage. They all have little ball sockets right there on the throttle arm. They just pop right off. Now looking at your throttle body right here, you have your idle air controller, you have your throttle positioning sensor, and you have your manifold actual pressure sensor. Each of these, when they go bad or when they start to go bad, will leave you on the side of the road or have your vehicle with a serious runnability issue. So having a spare one of these could be the difference between a tow truck or making it home. First, let's pull off your idle air controller. Each of these throttle body sensors is held on with Torx. I believe they're all T20 and T25. Looks like this IAC is a T20. There you go. There's your idle air controller. As a side note, cleaning this plunger up, this plunger on the end moves in and out to control how much air is making it through the auto body, uh, throttle body at idle. Cleaning this up is part of a tune-up on a four liter. There you go, idle air controller, first spare we're gonna pull. This could be the difference between the tow truck or making it home. Let's move over to our manifold actual pressure. I think those are T25s, they are. Now, to be completely honest, I haven't seen a lot of manifold actual pressure or map sensors go bad on four liters, but still good to know. Now, the key or the trick to these is there's a little rubber boot on the bottom that actually connects, that's where your input is for the sensor. So there's this little hole in your throttle body right there that goes to this nipple through this little rubber boot. So you wanna make sure that you pull that boot off intact you don't want to just yank on it and if it's cracked you want to replace it because that will give your ecu faulty readings for how much air your engine's pulling in and then this guy right here <laughs> oh boy the bane of water crossing four liters everywhere the tps throttle positioning throttle position throttle position sensing what am i trying to say here throttle position sensor christmas amateur hour i think this hard and harder if you're stupid i tell you uh, this guy is finicky and very, oh, oh, did I just break off my little guy? I think I did. Let me go get a, a slightly more robust tool. Just coming out hard. And the reason is it's a steel bolt deep in this aluminum casting. Those, uh, that bolt and casting are doing the dissimilar metals dance. So be prepared if you have to remove, well, any of these sensors, but specifically your TPS. It may be uh, of the mind to fight you. Now, what I was saying was these guys sit up on top of your motor and they're highly susceptible to moisture and water. So when they go bad, they make your transmission shift funny and it, it seems like your transmission is, is on the way out. And the reason is, um, Oh, Christmas. This is telling your ECU how much throttle's open. So it tells it where to shift and when to shift and how to shift. So when these things go out, they can make your motor run crazy. Won't idle, won't shift. Oh man, these guys are in there. Um, and since they're highly susceptible to moisture, you run through a puddle, you get a little splash up there, all of a sudden your motor's running oh, funkier than George Clinton. So having one or two spare TPS would recommend, especially if you do any amount of off-roading. Good gravy. I'm gonna destroy every T20 I brought with me today on this mission. 
but I'll be dipped if we're not gonna get her out now. But these uh, Japanese vampire pliers not too long ago, they got a bunch of really hard teeth. Oh, you can do stuff like grab stubborn, stubborn fasteners. They're not the right tool for the job. They're the tool you grab, well, you know, when you broke every other T20 you brought with you that day. They will mar up the fastener quite a bit, but I mean, it's better than sitting on the side of the road. So that's all your TPS sensor is. Uh, they have to be clocked when you put them in. See those two teeth? Those two teeth line up with this um, bar, which is attached to your throttle blade there, see? So uh, what I like to do is kind of put it in and then turn it and then make sure that while it's lined up, you can turn your throttle blade. But having a sensor of this or a spare of this guy could be a boon to getting you home. Now, another thing to know right here, this housing for your idle air controller does come off. And like I was saying, part of the tune up for a four liter is cleaning up that idle air controller and the housing. Those are your throttle body sensors. What other sensors should we pull on the motor? Let's go look. All right, friends, right here at the front of the motor is the sending unit for your coolant temperature. That tells your computer how hot your coolant temperature is uh, and whether or not there is an overheat situation going on with the Jeep. Uh, sometimes you may get a high reading and it might be worth it to swap this out to make sure that it is a legitimate high reading in your coolant temperature and not just a faulty sensor. Uh, this guy is a three quarter deep socket. Slip it over there. She pops right out. Now you're going to lose some coolant when you pull this guy out, but there she goes. You can clean her up a little bit. Keep her in for a spare. Alrighty friends, that brings us to the biggest pain in the butt sensor on the four liter right down here. You'll notice location is passenger side of the motor underneath your distributor or um, cam position sensor depending. Uh, so here's your oil filter. Right above that is your oil pressure sending unit. There's a big honker of a sensor. So you're gonna need a big honker of a socket not all deep sockets will do it oh it's got one of those red tabs my bet remove the red tab and then you can slide that guy right out it's an inch and a sixteenth hex um i'm not sure if the socket i brought today is going to do it it's not shoot so what you need and you can see the socket i brought today is is not correct for it you need a socket that's super hollow inside and super deep i have a carlisle inch and sixteenth that i'll try to find a link to that i know works but the good news is Nine times out of 10, a Nebraska nut rounder will get that guy out for you. Or a 27. And there you go, friends. There's the oil pressure sending unit for a Jeep four liter. For any of you WJ guys out there who are curious, it is not the same sender that goes in the 4.7. This is one out of a 4.7 that I pulled as a spare for my own daily. This is the one I just pulled out of this 1998 ZJ. Alrighty friends, the next sensor we're gonna talk about is exclusive to the late model four liters. I'm here in one of my own project WJs. And what you're looking at is the hole where your distributor ought to be. The distributor, if you think about it, is kind of an analog camshaft position sensor. What we have here is your actual camshaft positioning sensor. If you don't have a distributor, you have one of these bad boys. It's held on with four mil fasteners. Best of luck. I'm not trying to pull it out because I don't need to pull it out and I don't feel like stripping them on this particular Jeep right now. One thing I will tell you about cam position sensors, it's very, very possible to put them back 180 degrees out. I've done it myself. My formative years, I pulled one to diagnose it. I bench tested it, confirmed it was good, and I put it back in <whistles> facing forwards. Boy, was that a fun thing to chase down and diagnose because I had just confirmed the cam position sensor was good. This is one that will absolutely leave you stranded on the side of the road. When these things start to go, it, it seems like everything is wrong with your engine. It gives very similar symptoms to like a, a, a bad carburetor or something, you know, you're coughing, you're sputtering, you can't keep her lit, you gotta have your foot in it to keep it lit. Your, your computer doesn't know where your camshaft is, and as a result, it just doesn't know what to do if this thing is out. All right, now additionally, if we're on the WJs, and you're gonna have to bear with me here, 
your oil pressure sender gets both easier and more difficult to get to. Now we're looking at that same side of the engine. Here's your old oil filter, that good old Mopar 090. And on the uh, early model four liters, it's hanging off right here. You got that big long jam. Well, you remember the, the little guy that I showed you for the four liter. Same thing on a WJ, except it's all the way back there. You see it? I'll put a little arrow. Now I'm gonna zoom out to give you some uh, context. Past our oil filter there. That's your oil filter. That's how far back she is. Alrighty, friends, if you're in a WJ, finding your crank position sensor is pretty darn easy. If you want to get into the foot well on the driver's side and fold this carpet back a bit. And once you do, you'll be able to see this little access panel there. This guy right here behind there is your crank position sensor. The uh, cable for it is actually coming out through the middle of it. Two 10 mils, you can pull this guy right off. It comes right back. You need a couple extensions and a universal, but you can get the little guy right there. Now, if you're not in a WJ, it's simultaneously easier and harder. What you're going to need to do is crawl on your back here, climb underneath the Jeep. Right up here by your bell housing is your crankshaft position sensor. Most folks find it easiest to undo the connector from above inside the engine compartment and then undo the 11 millimeter fastener from below to pull your sensor out. All right, let's talk some obvious stuff. Find the power distribution block or fuse block and pull one of each type of component that's in there. You got these relays over here, which are not as common. You can get them off the shelf, but it's not the kind of thing you're just gonna have lying around. This Jeep has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a uh, 03WJ, seven of these. So I'm gonna keep one of these Omicrons. Maybe this big guy right here, these tend to be like starters and stuff. Same thing's gonna go for inside of the Jeep. You're gonna have a fuse block with uh, some relays, some fuses. You're gonna wanna pull some spares of that stuff. Now I know specifically in WJ's, the blinker relay goes, if you wanna grab that, it's up here behind this fuse panel. And there they are, friends. Those are the major sensors on the four liter that you're gonna need to know about from 84 to 2006. Those are the big ones, the ones that'll leave you on the side of the road, the ones that you can very easily and inexpensively pull at the junk yard. Help yourself out, keep them in a little bag. If you're really smart, you'll be hitting up all the WK Grand Cherokees for one of those bags that their uh, owner's manual came in. Keep all your sensors in that little branded Jeep bag. You cannot buy class like that. You just have to find it in a junkyard. Here's what we bought today, friends. At $10 a piece, your throttle body sensors, 10, 20, 30. That's 30 bucks to not be stuck on the side of the road. I'm fine with that. If you really want to, leave this one, all right? I, you don't see as many problems with the map sensors as you do with the other two, all right? Get yourself your uh, oil pressure sending unit, you're up to 40 bucks. Get a cam and a crank sensor, you're at what? 60 bucks? Make a deal with them to give you a handful of these electrical bits for 10 bucks, 70 bucks, maybe another five or 10 on that little bag I told you to find. For under hundred bucks, you have a beautiful little peace of mind set. Because here's the thing, man, the last four liter rolled off the line in 2006. Most of them rolled off the line a heck of a lot earlier than that. There are no new four liters. There aren't even some intermediate four liters. They're all old <laughs> and they're just getting older. Does that mean we shouldn't drive them? Should we send them all to the scrapyard? Frig no, but do yourself a favor. Know their limitations. Don't head out there in a 30, 30 year old vehicle for a 300 mile round trip and don't pack a spare TPS. You're just begging to get stuck on the side of the road. Take it from me, bud, someone who has been stuck on the side of the road over a faulty TPS. Ask me why I carry spares now. All right, friends, that's all there is to it. You wanna talk about the elephant in the room real quick, that sweatshirt I was wearing, right? The firing order on that is incorrect. That was a misprint, but I'm not a wasteful guy, so I still wear the sweatshirt in the garage for working. The bigger news is that sweatshirt is going on sale uh, in the coming weeks. So if you're interested in owning your very own four liter head gasket firing order sweatshirt, I promise, 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 that'll be the last one I misprint. Uh, keep an eye out. I'll be uh, releasing those mm, about another week or two. As for this video, that's all there is to it. What do y'all think? 
are those all the spares or did I miss some? I know there's some vehicle specific stuff um, that we could probably pull. And if you want to list that stuff down below, what do you guys pull that's vehicle specific for the WJ, the ZJ, the XJ? Uh, are there any things that you need to pull that are specific for the 2.5 liter that they put in the XJ? How about for the 5.2 liter and the 5.9 they put in the ZJ? Maybe those are videos we'll do. I'm happy we started with the four liter though. Always love making a four liter video ties us back to our roots leave me that comment down in a squawk box let me know what you think about it let me know what spares you're pulling if you like the video like the video that's common sense subscribe to the channel maybe check out our website monkeywithatoolbox.com as always thanks for watching see you next time